Today I thought it was National Camera Day, but turns out that was actually June 29th, and today is July 1st. Anyway, um, I'm still going to participate in National Camera Day, and I'm going to show you my top four film cameras that I use. You might have seen my videos, and why I use them, how I got them. Let's go. And my first one will be Minolta SRT-201. And I got this bad little boy at a thrift store for about $25. And there was two lenses next to it for $2 each. And I was like, what? I always wanted one. And I was like, I just couldn't believe it. It was like right there. I didn't even heard of a Minolta. Who's heard of that? I mean, at the time, you know. I've always heard of Nikon. Canon, Sony, but Minolta? And this is the lens that came with it. It was a um, 1.4 58mm. I had no idea anything about this. So, turns out this has a light meter, but supposedly it's really bad. You have to use your own light meter and adjust the settings all right here. It's kind of a good little tool for me to learn how to use film because you had to actually use the light meter instead of like program, automatic, or point shoot you had to kind of know what you're doing to take a good photo because as you can see in these couple photos over here this is when I was first starting out and they were terrible if you guys want to see the full video of my first film progression photography when I had this camera the link will be down below Next up I have the Minolta X700 right here. And I got this little classic bad boy from my friend. And eventually I found out that it also has automatic and P mode. So if it's like low light situations or just street photography or something like that, I just wanna shoot without light meter, then set it up there. Shoot out for a bang. And it really has a nice little tone to it, the little black and orange with the lens. It really complements it really well. Other than that, it does have a strap, but to me, I tried to strap once and it kind of fell off. It also has a self timer right here. Just gotta lift up and then push the button and it'll start beeping. I do have some film in here right now, so I can't really do any test shots of that. But also, speaking of self timers, the Minolta SRT201 has a self timer right here. I just pulled it down, then you release it right there. And it took the shot. <laughs> but make sure you just have a tripod when doing that for low exposures or minimal shakiness. And also cool thing about these two Minolta cameras and I'm sure of many other film cameras is on the back it has a cool little nifty spot right here. And it has all this, but also has like a little spot we can slide something in. And usually what people do is if they have a certain film They'll turn off the section of the box that tells what the film is and just slide it in right here. Like right now, this is Minolta. I'm shooting 400TX black and white film. And I put it right there so I'll know. It also shows how many exposures it has. And this also has three modes on it. It has off. Then you've turned this dial all the way to the top. It has a blinking on. And so that means. That means the light source is really dim, so you gotta be really careful. It means typically if it's like under 6 you'll start blinking. It's like, watch out. But if I like put it right next to my light source over here, super bright, it won't do anything. But if I take it away, it becomes super dim and it's saying, hey watch out, because it might not be a good shot. Or just be careful. And it looks like that. And also, they have a regular button on the opposite direction, and it just looks like this. Like I said, this camera has three modes on it, which is Minor Mode, Aperture Priority Mode, A Mode, and P Mode, which is Program Mode. And a lot of people like to say that's like the older version or newest version that's kind of like a point and shoot, where the camera just kind of decides everything for you. And also be very wary about your cameras for your Monolta's, because the older ones, like these two, 
These are what they would call a MD lens. Depending on your Minolta, you definitely want to check it out before you actually go online and buy some lenses to check it out. Because me, myself, when I was trying to get some lenses, I bought a couple and I got the wrong ones. I got the ones that said AF instead of MC and MD, so they weren't compatible. They didn't fit. You can easily get like a um, Sony or a lens adapter that connects the two. That'll work, but I wasn't trying to do that. I was just trying to get the original correct lens. So yeah, that's my two Minolta's. And the next two I got for uh, Christmas. This one I never even heard of. I say way less than Minolta because even when I looked it up, I didn't really see that much. It is the Dakota RZ2000. And it came with a quantum ray. And it's 35 to 70 millimeter. So when I was looking up, I didn't really see too much about it. Looks like it doesn't really have a meter inside of it. Just, you know, has the normal little manual buttons that you can try and figure out yourself right here you think you just go you wind it up right and you go but it doesn't click down like that for some reason this camera you have to go like this and click so instead of like this one you wind it up I mean, sure, you can do that too, but also, you know, bring it all the way back. But this one, if it's all the way back, it won't let you click. You have to bring it right here, and then... And it's pretty black and minimal, pretty slick, and it came with a nice little strap on it. Then my next one is the old classic Canon E1 program. Right here. It also comes with a nice strap to it. I like the red, kind of makes it pop on whatever color you're wearing. <laughs> and like I mentioned earlier, it also has a little place where you can slide what film you have right in there. It has a uh, manual mode and also has program mode. So if you just low light situations or just want to point and shoot, street photography, just click and go and unfortunately like mine and probably someone else's this this camera needs to be tended to because if you notice it doesn't have that normal crank as another camera would it's like more clean and crisp that is something eventually you can easily get fixed, but otherwise, if your camera makes that noise, don't worry. It's, nothing's wrong with it, just something about the motor needs to be tended to. Other than that, this one just has another clean... colorway as well. Thanks for watching, guys. That's what's in my camera arsenal, or camera weaponry, that's what we'll call it. My favorite two would have to be the Minolta X700 or the Canon AU-1 program. Just because they're very versatile in whatever situations. You know, they have the option to go to program mode or straight up manual. The other ones are really good for practicing and yeah. I almost forgot, I actually have one more camera in my little arsenal. It's uh, my first little experimental 125mm film. And that's the Holga 120CFN. And I got it at a um, film shop yard sale because they're closing out of business. They're moving to a new location and they had to get rid of stuff. So this is like, I can't remember if it's $5 or $20, but. A lot of people around me said it was a fun and cheap camera. It's not really good, but it does like um, light leaks. And there's no focus point on this camera. It just focuses wherever. It might not even focus. And then um, 
It has 16 or 12 shots in it. I shot it one time and only got about like four or five pitchers out of the 12 or 16. I don't know what happened, but that's why I haven't really shot too much besides this. Cause, um, like I said, this is a cheap camera. Man, out of, the whole thing's like man out of plastic. So yeah, if you guys have any um, extra advice on how to shoot this little dude right here, let me know down below and let me know because I'm about to put up a few little simple shots. I haven't really put up anywhere, but they'll be right here. So what team are you? Are you guys brand loyal to a certain brand? And what's some of your favorite cameras that you guys like to use? Let me know down below and national and happy national camera day to you. Even though it's already passed like three days ago, but still, wherever you're watching, any day is celebrated, right? Make the ordinary extraordinary. And don't forget, from this day, July 1st, there's 178 days of Christmas.